The movie begins with scenes from the United States Marine Corps base, where some members are shown undergoing rigorous training. Meanwhile, in another room, there are several Marines who are engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and a woman named Allison stands out among the members. However, she faces a surprise attack from her trainer, reminding her not to let her guard down even after feeling victorious. Not long after, a secret agent named Sam, who turns out to be Allison's uncle, appears and admires her skills. They meet later at a bar to catch up, and Sam reveals his plan to take Allison to the White House, having obtained permission from the Marine Corps General. Excited about the opportunity to serve there, Allison wonders if it's solely because of her relationship with him. Sam then explains that he's taking Allison because she's the most exceptional among the other Marines. Meanwhile, news spreads about the American president planning to cooperate with Estovia, a country in Eastern Europe near Russia, particularly in oil matters. Despite opposition, the president insists on this cooperation, especially regarding oil. The following day at the White House, the president discusses with his vice president, who protests his decision to cooperate with Estovia. According to her, this decision is highly controversial, as it is known that the oil in Estovia is largely controlled by the Mafia. However, the president remains firm on his decision. On the other hand, Allison now stationed at the White House, while Sam instructs his team to prepare to escort the president to Estovia to finalize the cooperation between the two countries. After that, Sam then tells Allison that she'll accompany him to Estovia tomorrow to escort the president on Air Force One the advanced and luxurious aircraft owned by the United States government. Upon hearing this, Allison is taken aback because she's dreamt of flying on Air Force One since she was a teenager. Later that evening, the scene shifts to Estovia, specifically to the headquarters of General Rodinov, where Rodinov strongly opposes the president's decision to cooperate with the United States. In fact, Rodinov has already taken a prime minister of Estovia who supports this cooperation hostage, and without hesitation orders his right-hand man to eliminate the prime minister. As a general controlling the oil in Estovia, Rodinov fears being sidelined if Estovia cooperates with America, losing control over his country's oil. The scene changes to an Air Force One pilot returning home to find his family held hostage by Rodinov's henchman, Nikolay. At that time, Nikolay demands that the pilot contact the president's staff and inform them that he cannot work tomorrow. Despite complying, Nikolay ruthlessly kills the pilot and his family. On the other hand, it shows one of the American agents tasked with holding aircraft logistics data about to get into his car, but suddenly he is attacked from behind and knocked unconscious. Unexpectedly, the man who attacked him is also one of General Rodinow's henchmen named Joan. Quickly, Joan accesses the aircraft logistics data until eventually the logistics access is successfully controlled by Rodinov's group. The next day, Allison is excited to board Air Force One for the first time. She's impressed by its grandeur. Sam quickly invites Allison to board because they must be inside the aircraft before the president arrives. Shortly after, the president of America, nicknamed Falcon, finally arrives and boards the plane. Once Falcon boards, he's escorted to his private room as the plane prepares for takeoff. Unbeknownst to them, Nikolay has infiltrated as the pilot, while Joan eliminates another agent in the rear cabin. That night, after the plane takes off, one of the pilots tries to reach the control center. However, the control center cannot communicate with them because their server has been hijacked. At the same time, Nikolay swiftly eliminates both pilots and informs Radinov, that Air Force One is now fully under their control. Meanwhile, during a press conference inside the plane, a journalist questions the president about cooperating with Estovia. The president explains it's at the request of Estovia's president because there is abundant oil there, but it rarely enters the state treasury. Meanwhile, Nikolai gains access to the plane's sound system, allowing Rodinov to address the passengers. When Rodinov is connected, Everyone is shocked because they have just learned that the plane they are on has been hijacked. Rodinov then explains that the president is now powerless because they have hijacked all the satellite servers and everything, so for now, the president is better off following Rodinov's orders. Realizing that the president is in danger, Sam, as the head of security, 
immediately asks the president to enter a special room with two agents, and then asks all passengers to remain calm in the middle room, and instructs one agent to guard them. As for the remaining security agents, Sam asks them to scatter and search for the infiltrators. Shortly after, one of the agents guarding the passengers is unexpectedly killed by a journalist from Estovia, who is revealed to be one of Radanov's henchmen. This journalist, accompanied by another person, signals that there are now four infiltrators on the plane. Meanwhile, two agents enter the pilot's room, only to be swiftly eliminated by Joan from behind. Joan then uses a coded knock to signal Nikolay, who announces their control over Air Force One and demands the president to leave the secure room. Nikolay threatens to harm the passengers if the president refuses. As a demonstration of their control, Nikolay shakes the plane, causing Sam's leg to be pierced by a key. Sam then advised Allison that her main task was to protect the president and instructed her to move to another location while he tended to his leg wound. Meanwhile, Nikolai continued to press the president to leave the secure room, giving him a deadline of 20 seconds and Nikolai begins to count, because they will not play around with their threats. Eventually, the president complied and went to the middle room where the passengers were held. As he moved, two agents guarding him were killed by Joan from behind. The president was then escorted to the B-class cabin, where Radanov demanded that he make a video announcement canceling the cooperation with Estovia and expressing animosity towards its president and people within an hour. Radanov then gives the president one hour to make this confession video. Meanwhile, the journalist, one of Radanov's henchmen, kept the president under control, but his attention was diverted, allowing the president to resist briefly before being subdued again. On the other hand, Joan preparing to enter the B-class cabin signaled his presence with five knocks, which noticed by Allison. Joan then revealed the presence of Allison and Sam, prompting the journalist to search for them while he waited for the president. After the journalist leaves, Allison tries knocking on the door five times until it is finally opened. A fight between Joan and Allison ensues. However, Allison is very skilled in close combat, so she ultimately manages to eliminate Joan. The scene then shifts to one of Radanov's henchmen in the passenger cabin, who is seen keeping watch over the hostages, including officials and important individuals. Suddenly, he notices movement from the adjacent room, where Sam is located. When he attempts to subdue Sam, the journalist appears while pointing a gun. Unable to contact Joan, who has already been killed by Allison, the journalist alerts Nikolai to investigate. Hearing this, Nikolai switches the plane to autopilot and rushes to Joan's location. Meanwhile, Allison and the president are unsure of their next move. A journalist warns Allison to surrender, threatening to kill her uncle, Sam. The journalist then tells Sam to persuade Allison to surrender now. However, Sam urges Allison to prioritize protecting the president and warns against surrendering, knowing they'll all be killed anyway. Angered by Sam's defiance, the journalist kills Sam and the hostages without hesitation. Upon hearing the gunshots, Allison felt devastated, realizing that Sam had likely been killed. She quickly urged the president to head to the emergency room as they planned to parachute out of the plane. As Nikolay appeared, Allison managed to shoot him, but accidentally grazed the president's hand in the process. Thankfully, the injury wasn't severe. Shortly after, Allison and the president parachuted out of the plane. Meanwhile, the journalist and his comrade felt frustrated realizing the two had escaped. The journalist promptly informed Radanov that the president and one of his agents had parachuted to an area near the valley close to Russia. Upon receiving this information, Radanov ordered his men to destroy Air Force One while they searched for the president's landing spot. Meanwhile, the Air Force One control center was in a panic as the plane vanished from the radar. They quickly contacted the White House staff to report the situation. Mark, the presidential chief of staff, promptly informed the vice president about the disappearance. In a meeting, the vice president expressed concern about the president's survival, to which Mark reluctantly admitted that surviving plane crashes is rare. Hearing this, the vice president instructed Mark to travel to Estovia to seek assistance in searching for the crash victims. Meanwhile, Allison and the president had landed safely and were seeking refuge.
Allison suggested they head to higher ground to improve their chances of getting a signal for help. At the same time, General Rodinov dispatched numerous men to search the valley for the President and Allison. Shortly after, Allison and the President, after walking all day, stumbled upon a hut in the forest and decided to rest there for the night. Inside, Allison tended to the President's wounded hand while reflecting on the apparent betrayal that led to the plane hijacking, where they could easily hijack the plane, and they also knew about Sam, who was Allison's uncle. Afterward, Allison and the President sat in a corner of the house, sharing their experiences with each other, and the President also apologized for Sam's death. Allison expressed her fondness for Sam, who had cared for her since her parents passed away. However, she believed Sam would be proud of her for protecting the President. The next morning, Allison was seen still asleep, leaning on the president's shoulder. Shortly after, Allison finally woke up and immediately apologized. The president then replied that Allison didn't need to apologize because there would be no one jealous since the president was still single. After that, they continued their journey but encountered many of Rodinow's henchmen nearby. Allison began to eliminate them, but they soon found themselves outnumbered. In the end, the president suggested surrendering, realizing they couldn't defeat Rodinov's men. Not long after, Allison and the president found themselves in Rodinov's headquarters, feeling powerless. Allison was distraught over failing her duty, especially after Sam had trusted her. After that, Rodinov and his men took the president to another room, while Allison was left with Rodinov's right-hand man. As they walked, Rodinov expressed his hatred for capitalists who would ruin his country. The president replied that Rodinov actually knew that this cooperation would benefit both countries. But Rodinov refused because he had been controlling the oil in Estovia without sharing any profits with the country. In the room, Rodinov demanded a confession video canceling the cooperation with Estovia and accused the president of Estovia as the one who caused the chaos. Upon hearing this, the president refused, willing to face immediate death. But Rodinov threatened to harm Allison forcing the president to comply. He gave him an hour to decide. Meanwhile, Rodinov's right-hand man attempted to harass Allison, who fought back and killed him. Quietly, she proceeded to eliminate their enemies in another room. On the other hand, the president reluctantly complied with Rodinov's orders to spare Allison from suffering. Shortly after, two makeup artists arrived to change the president's clothes and apply makeup before recording the confession video. Meanwhile, Allison armed herself with a rifle and launched an attack on Rodinov's henchmen in the room. Just as the president was ready to record, chaos erupted as Allison fought back. Hearing the gunfire, Rodinov and the president realized Allison was behind it. Shortly after, Allison managed to defeat all of Rodinov's men, leaving him alone with the president. Rodinov demanded Allison surrender, threatening to kill the president without hesitation. In a critical moment, Rodinov shooting Allison's arm. As Rodinov was about to finish Allison off, the president suddenly killed him from behind. In the end, both Allison and the president survived. The following morning, the president and Allison were discovered by Mark, the head of the president's staff. Mark was relieved to find the president alive and urged him to leave for a nearby airstrip to fly back to America. However, the president declined instructing Mark to attend to Allison's wounds instead. In the end, Mark complied, saying that Allison had won. Upon hearing this, Allison remembered her former trainer, who once said she should never let her guard down, even when she felt victorious. While Allison was being treated by Special Forces soldiers, she asked if they were a combined unit. They confirmed Allison's question, so she asked if they knew Commander Alex, because Commander Alex also joined that unit. Hearing this, they said that just last week he had a conversation with Commander Alex. However, Allison suddenly killed them. After that, Allison explained that she had just made up a story about someone named Alex, and they confessed to knowing him. However, Alex was not a commander, but rather the owner of a bakery near Allison's house. Therefore, Allison was convinced that they, along with Mark, were the traitors all along. At the same time, Mark suddenly threatened the president because Mark had long been colluding with General Rodinov. However, Allison intervened and killed Mark before he could harm the president. Afterward, they headed to the small airstrip, 
but the president refused the offered plane, opting instead to fly the plane himself. While in the air, the president asked Allison if she had a boyfriend, to which she replied that she hadn't. Later, the president made an announcement stating that he had survived the previous day's ordeal and reaffirmed the positive relationship between the United States and Estovia. Towards the end of his speech, he expressed his intention to propose to Allison. Moral lesson from the story, never trust a baker named Alex when he claims to be a commander, or you might end up flying a plane with your crush as your co-pilot.